Hey y'all, today I'm going to be showing you a flip through and thorough review of Singapore Dimensions Math level K, A, and B. So the whole kindergarten grade level of this math program. Let's get into it. So first of all, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Kayla. I am a second generation homeschool mom to two girls, age seven and four. And this is Ode to Abode, a place where I love to talk about home education, homemaking, and parenthood. If you love those things too, please consider joining the conversation by clicking that subscribe button. Click that notification bell so you'll be one of the first to know when I make a new video. All right, guys. So. If you've been around here for any length of time, or if you follow me on Instagram, then you know my family really loves Singapore Dimensions Math. I have both of my girls using this math program, and it has been a huge success in our homeschool. So today we're going to be taking a look at the kindergarten level. So the first thing that I want to tell you guys about this curriculum is it is split up into two semesters for each grade level. So for each grade level, you will need two sets of books. You'll need an A set of books and a B set of books, and that will cover the whole grade level. So a total of six to eight books per grade depending on which books you decide to use. So let me show you. So for each semester, you will need a teacher's guide. These are spiral bound teacher's guides. This is the one for KB. You'll need a textbook. This is your main book that you're using for lessons with your child or your student. And then you'll also need a workbook. This is going to be where you do your practice and review of what you've gone over in your lesson. It's also a good opportunity for your child or your student to try to do some work independently using this book. Now for each semester of each grade level, they also offer a test book. I don't have those to show you for the level K. I did get the test books for the second grade level, which I will be starting with my older daughter this upcoming school year. But I don't have those test books to show you here because we didn't use them for kindergarten or for first grade. So next year for second grade, I will be using them for the first time. For the whole level, the workbooks and textbooks for this program are going to be consumable, meaning that they are meant to be written in or drawn in. There's activities in the books themselves. There's even some things to cut out, some like cut and paste activities. So you won't be able to get away with having multiple kids use the textbook or the workbook. However, your teacher's guides are not consumable. So if you wanted to reuse this for another child, give it to a friend, or even sell your teacher's guide after you are finished with it, you definitely can do that. I know that looks like a lot of books, but I just want to assure you that this is not a workbook math curriculum. Singapore Dimensions Math does not sell a full box kit of this curriculum with all of the games and manipulatives and printables. And the reason they've opted not to sell it that way is for costs. They really want to make sure that this curriculum is affordable for everyone. However, all that being said, this math curriculum is still meant to be a very hands-on math curriculum. Yes, there are worksheets. We just saw all of the books, but there's also a lot that this curriculum includes, like storybook recommendations, activity recommendations, game recommendations, as well as a full line of free printables that you can access on their website that go along with corresponding lessons. So things like flashcards or 10 frames, all of those things you can easily print in black and white at a low cost and you can access them for free on the website. They do also offer a recommendation for certain manipulatives that you can use with this curriculum that really help 
to get those skills and those concepts down for your kids. And I typically just bought our math manipulatives such as counting cubes or tangrams. I typically just bought those on Amazon or wherever I can find them for the least expensive price. And because you get the option to pick and choose what manipulatives you feel that you really need or what manipulatives you really feel are gonna help your child with a specific concept that maybe they're struggling with, that makes this curriculum even more affordable because you can really hone in on the exact things you actually need to buy instead of buying a box kit that includes so much stuff that you might not really need, you might only use one time. I really like the flexibility and affordability that Singapore Dimensions Math has. So I wanna show you guys what these books look like on the inside. So let's get started. I'm gonna turn the camera around so we can take a look at Singapore Dimensions Math, level K, A, and mostly KB. Now what I love about the Dimensions Teacher Guide is for every teacher guide that you get, you're going to have a table of contents for this specific teacher guide, for what's included. You'll have information on how the curriculum is designed and sort of the reasons behind things, which is great. But here is my favorite part. You have a scope and sequence that actually covers all the grade levels. So you'll see here they start all the way with PK, and they're going to go through every single grade level and tell you what is going to be covered in that grade level. This is so helpful to me to just be able to see what's coming up next and what I need to be preparing my child for. Dimensions is a mastery math program. It's a conceptual math program. So they're focusing on teaching overall conceptual understanding. They're focusing on a lot of mental math and they also wanna make sure that your child has a solid foundation and has really mastered a skill before moving on to a more difficult related skill. However, that being said, for those of you that love spiral math programs, don't automatically assume that you won't love dimensions math because really math kind of naturally spirals. All of the concepts are connected and your child will be building skills slowly. So they're gonna be revisiting things over and over, but just at a higher difficulty level. So just as an example, all the way in pre-K, we're starting with ordinal numbers, but they're not gonna master ordinal numbers in pre-K. So here in KA, we're gonna review ordinal numbers. And then in 1A, we're also gonna be reviewing ordinal numbers. So there are certain concepts that are just naturally spiral and your child will be learning and coming back to um, over a period of several grade levels, over a period of years. Same with time, with money. Um, they're gonna be revisiting that and spiraling back. Almost every single grade level has a chapter on time and money. So that's just an example of how Math naturally spirals and how Singapore dimensions also kind of naturally spirals. And of course, you yourself as the parent, as the instructor, can spiral back to concepts using the different tools that they have for you. So I've seen a lot of parents, you know, they'll do a lesson with their textbook and they'll do a lesson with their workbook and then they'll move on. And then in the test book, they will go back a couple of chapters. And so their test book, they'll be behind where they are with their workbook and textbook. And that's for the purpose of spiraling and reviewing and assessing. So there's definitely options of how you could make this more spiral if that is your thing with math. Okay, but we are looking at the K level. So let's look at what your child is going to learn in the K level if they start with KA. They're going to have some practice with matching, sorting, and classifying, recognizing when things are the same or different, recognizing their left from their right. They're going to have some practice with number recognition and counting, first to five and then to 10. Again, we're going to be going over some ordinal position practice for just a little bit at the tail end of that chapter. Then we're going to have a chapter on shapes and solids, height, length, weight, and capacity, comparing numbers within 10. So this is kind of like less than, more than, 
more or fewer. And then in KB, we're going to be practicing number recognition and counting up to 20. And now Singapore Dimensions Math is going to be introducing number bonds at the tail end of our kindergarten level, which they will be revisiting and using number bonds throughout all of their elementary years. Then we have some addition practice, some subtraction practice. Then we use addition and subtraction. And then number recognition and counting to 100. And we have a chapter on time and a chapter on money. So that is what your child's going to be learning through the entire kindergarten grade level, KA and KB. So now let's actually look at what a lesson will look like. This is chapter 8 of level KB. And I just kind of picked a random lesson that I haven't done yet. I haven't actually taught this lesson with my daughter yet. She's a couple chapters back. But this is the chapter on number bonds. So when you open your chapter, just like all the other grade levels, they all look very similar. You're going to have a layout of the entire chapter. This is a long chapter. Most chapters only have about four lessons. This one is extra long because they really want your child to understand number bonds. That's a tool that they're going to be using over and over in lots of different concepts. So yeah, this is a long chapter, but they're going to have each individual lesson, the page number, the resources that you're going to need. So your pages in your textbook and in your workbook, and then an objective for each lesson, which is very helpful. And then we will have some more information about what we're actually trying to teach with this chapter. And then you're also going to have a list of materials that you may need for this chapter. And most of the things are things you already have around the house, which is good. We also have our list of Black Line Masters. So Black Line Masters is the free printables that are included with this program. And then what I also really love is each of your chapters is going to have a list of storybooks. So if you are a Charlotte Mason or a classical homeschooler, or you just really love to tie literature in with your learning, this is an awesome list of resources for you. All of these are just children's storybooks that are gonna reinforce the math concepts being taught in this chapter. The letters home section, if you're a homeschool parent, you don't really need to look at that. That is for classroom teachers. I am excited to say that very soon in the next couple of months, Singapore Dimensions Math is actually going to start releasing teacher's guides specifically for home educators. So this will be a lot more customized to our needs, which is so exciting. I cannot wait. Then you'll also have a very generous page for notes and any additional planning that you would like to do for the chapter. And then we go right in to our lessons. Each chapter will have what they call a chapter opener, which is basically an introduction to the concept. You're going to have a page to look at together in your textbook. And then you'll have a lot of guidance here as your teacher on what you're wanting to bring out what you're hoping your student will notice from the picture, how you can discuss it. And then after your chapter opener, you will go into your lessons. We're gonna have an objective and materials for this specific lesson. We're gonna have our textbook page, and we're gonna have this layout, which is explore and learn on pretty much every lesson. In higher grade levels, they will have explore, learn, do. But for kindergarten, they just have explore and learn for most lessons. And you have a lot of instruction here on how to teach this. Um, you'll go over your textbook. They usually will have an activity option. And then they'll have this exercise one. That's your workbook page. So let me show you what that looks like. So our textbook corresponding page is on page 30. So you can see that this is the exact page, except they have given you the answers in your teacher's guide. In your textbook, the answer spots are blank. So this is an actual work page that your student will do. And then you have your corresponding workbook page. They call them exercises. So in our workbook, 
And it's basically practicing and reinforcing the same skills from our textbook lesson. It usually is just looking at them in a slightly different way. And then it also lets us know that for this page, we're going to be using some linking cubes, which they have already illustrated on the page, but they want your student to have that hands-on element, which is really, really helpful with math. So yeah, that is going to be a typical lesson for your K level. You'd have a textbook page or two, a workbook page or two, an activity or maybe a story that you read for that concept and then you're done. That's it. That's your whole lesson. And then after that we would just do another lesson and another lesson. You could cover a lesson a day with this. You could split all of these different segments up and take a little longer. Maybe you do a lesson over two days or three days. So yeah, that is a little flip through. We mostly looked at KB. KA works exactly the same way. And I did show you the scope and sequence for both semesters of the kindergarten level. All right, I really hope that this video was helpful to you. If you all have any questions about Singapore Dimensions Math, please feel free to put them in the comments. I'm now almost complete with teaching two full grade levels of this math curriculum. It does go from pre-K to fifth grade. And right now I'm almost done teaching the full kindergarten level and the full first grade level. And I'm really excited to start the second grade level with my oldest daughter. In the next coming weeks, I'm going to be sharing a flip through of the second grade level of this math curriculum as well. I fully expect that this will be our math curriculum all the way through fifth grade because we love it so much. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. I'll see y'all in the next one. Happy homeschooling.